Okay everybody, my name is Owen Fox from OwenFox.org and HigherSelfHerbs.com. I work as a spiritual life coach and today I'm inspired to make a video with the intent to help people on the topic of when people are in relationships and they're unsure or confused about the idea of um, not I shouldn't expect anything, not expecting too much and also not being attached not being attached, being attached, afraid to be attached, as well as desires, and if desires are bad, or if it's your ego, etc. So, I want to start off by saying, you know, on one side, if we try and think, oh no, it's just my ego, I'm being too expectation, I'm expecting too much, um, this can lead to neglecting our needs. So, needs and de desires or wishes can all come hand in hand. So, needs, desires and wishes. A desire is just something you really want in your heart. So, it's nothing wrong or bad to have a desire. Like, I don't know where the Buddha teacher, where it became misconstrued. But it's really attachment to your desire as in needing what you, what you wish for. When you desperately need something and like you're you're longing for it, but you're longing for it in a really like immature, basic way. You see, there's two ways of looking at life from the mature perspective. The conscious, grown-up, mature, um, developed, sophisticated, advanced, spiritual perspective. And human, physical perspective too, but it's mature. The other way of looking at something, which you could call a desire or anything in life, is from the immature, babyish, um, undeveloped, um, selfish, um, you know, arrogant, uh, living on fear and separatism, all this sort of stuff way, okay? So let's look at desires and from both ways. It's good and self-loving and nurturing to want to follow your true heart's desire. Um, but when we're like immature, that's when we're, we're clinging, we're striving, we're, we're needing it desperately, we're losing it in gratitude. We don't see the bigger picture. Uh, we're needy, insecure, unhealed. And um, there's nothing wrong with being needy. We're all needy to a degree at certain things at certain times. We might need a hug or a cuddle. We might need a bit of reassurance. There's nothing wrong with being needy. Similarly, there's nothing wrong with saying, like in my last video, I made a video on, um, saying what you hate or don't like or don't want. It's good to get that in the open, to be honest with yourself, instead of suppressing and being in self-denial. The problem is when you're living in this immature and developed unhealed state, you focus all the time on what you don't have and you live in misery and you're negative and you're complaining. You don't, you're don't. not grateful or appreciative of the people you have or the things that you have, the body you have, the food you have, the money you have, the abundance, the riches, the blessings you have. So I just want to get that clear first. So when it comes to relationships, we have needs in life and in relationships. Um, we have hopes, desires, but ideally, it's best not to have attachments. So let's say a need is a universal need. I need to be, I need intimacy. I need security. I need a home. Um, I need love in my life. I need to love. I need, there's, there's needs from others on the outside and there's needs within ourselves. I need to be honest. I need to be integral. I have this need to be fair. And when we don't get our, when we don't fulfill our own needs, we can feel sad upset, disappointed. We can mourn. And they're healthy emotions because we haven't met our own needs to be these good characteristics. And that's when people get depressed, sad and lost. Similarly, we have outer needs, security, money, safety. We need people. We, need, we generally often feel the need for understanding of others as a very strong human need instead of being misunderstood. Um, the thing is, it's, needs aren't specific. You don't say, I need a home, so therefore I need this home. That's when that's when the immature ego, if you want to call it that, comes in. I need this home, I want this toy and I want it now. Or I want this person, I, I want them now, in this way. The, the, the immature part of us wants what we want, when we want, and in the way we want it. We want this person right now, in the exact way we want them to be. It's generally very selfish inconsiderate, like a juvenile baby, like a big baby. Having tantrums, being manipulative, being very selfish and unthoughtful, unkind and caring towards other people. So I hope you're going to paint a picture of the two sides of maturity and immaturity. 
development and in development, healed versus unhealed, conscious versus unconscious. Then we can understand greater that it's okay to have needs, but we don't have to have a specific person or, or thing um, supply our needs. So we can say I need a person like this, like this type of person is what I feel I need in a relationship. Um, we don't say I need you to be fulfilling this role, like there's lots of other people in the world. So if, if one person doesn't suit you in a relationship, then leave. Like I don't mean that in a mean way, but like why hang around in a mutually, probably mutually unfulfilling, unhappy relationship? That's all I mean. I don't mean to be selfish. And if you're going to act from being conscious and healed and mature and grown up, caring, kind, lovely, you're not going to be mean. You're going to be very mature and responsible about it and caring for people's feelings and life. And <clears throat> it's the immature self that's demanding as well. Like It's based on insecurity and unhealedness and also selfishness selfishness towards yourself in the immature way and not being caring for the other person. I was thinking today if I have one need it's not that I need you to do this for me or do that for me specifically and um, like I don't need you to be uh, always coddling me. I was thinking today if I have one need like metaphorically speaking in a relationship in a way um, I need you to practice self-love and self-nurture so you're joyful and happy in life. And then when you want to message me or give me a hug or if you want to interact with me, you do have your own volition of free will and readiness and you're excited and happy to do so and this enthusiasm and excitement because you've done the self-love, self-nurture part and you haven't felt demanded or pressured from me to give me, let's say, any of my int needs for intimacy and affection love, kindness, sharing, honesty, because when people feel it's forced and pushed upon them, pressured and they're when they feel controlled or demanded, people shut down. So that's why I said my, if I had to say what my need was, practice self-love and, and uh, self-nurture, get happy, get joyful, get fulfilled more, healthy, happy, and then we come together and it's light and refreshing and uplifting. Um, so, this ties in with attachment. I need you to be this way so I can be happy. That's very risky to um, try and say to somebody to put the burden of your happiness on another person. I, I want, I need you to be this way so I can be happy. Um, we, you do want a level of freedom and, and um, no expectations to a degree. Um, no pressure, no demand. It's slightly complicated because we all have sensitivities and we have to work with our vulnerabilities and our sensitivities. So at the same time we have to also work with the needs of another person for freedom and, and tap in their life. So if we're vulnerable and we, we're more needy we have to try and understand other people have a need for freedom and not to be pressured or smothered or demanded upon. So we just need to learn to communicate. I'll put up a video which I really recommend in the description box, a three hour document um, documentary workshop. It's a three hour workshop I've called Nonviolent Communication. I highly recommend. It's really helped me in my life and I'm very grateful and it's, as I said it's helped me a lot. So is there anything else to say in this video regarding um, I just want people, from, like speaking from my heart, not to feel, not to neglect their needs and not to just say, oh, I don't want people to say, it's just the desire, it's the ego, or it's um, it's just, you shouldn't have expect. I don't want people to be thinking, oh, I shouldn't have any expectations. It's okay to have certain expectations, and you know, like you want somebody, you may, be in a, you may want your partner or need your partner to be open-minded. You may need them to be on a similar wavelength and path to you. You may need them to have similar hobbies. Because otherwise they can just be friends. Like, what's wrong with friends, okay? Partners are supposed to be at the top of the pyramid. The number one position at the very, very top. Everyone else goes below that. And the number one position should be extremely carefully chosen. 
and it's a very honoured and revered spot to elevate somebody to that number one position. Most people just in the un immature phase of, of us, whatever, it's largely got to do with sexual energy, sex, to just put anyone on number one, to share their life with, to be a team partner in life, and then all hell breaks loose, because they don't have the mental, emotional or spiritual connection, they maybe just have the physical and um, sexual connection only, but they mightn't have like social connection, like mental, similar hobbies, life direction, interests, um, emotional vulnerability and sharing and trust and um, all sorts of stuff. So I want you to honour, what I want in this video is I want you to honour your needs and understand your needs. I want you to honour yourself and not to belittle yourself. I want you to respect what you want in a relationship and to respect your unhappiness and sadness or disappointment or even anger when you're not getting what you want. And I mean that from a mature way, not an immature like tantrum way. So when you're not getting what you what you really love from your deep down in your heart, your desire, question if this person you're with is the one for you. And I'm not encouraging reckless breaking up or fighting, or blaming, arguing. I'm I'm promoting maturity and responsibility and mature actions and wise decisions, as much healing as possible. You know, me and my ex-partner now are really good friends and it's a lovely relationship to have now. We had a, t a challenging relationship, spiritual, lots of, lots of positive and lots of challenging times. We're friends and I love that. Friends is good is my point. When you close a door on a relationship that's not working, it's only then you're opening a space for a new relationship to come. That's better for everybody. Usually people stay in relationships out of comfort, fear of the unknown, fear of breaking up, fear of going with alone, fear of maybe other people's opinions, fear of the idea that people will judge them for taking a step backward, fear of being judged as a failure or a bad wife or a bad husband or a bad partner. They're afraid to be alone and single again. They're afraid of uncertainty. They're afraid of change. They, they're afraid of not knowing what's going to happen next without their partner anymore to be beside them even if it's an uncomfortable situation they still have a partner to help them kind of it's like we're, we're, we're more comfortable in an uncomfortable situation we prefer the comfort of knowing of certainty than the uncomfort of not knowing even if the, the thing we're comfortable with is like really like not really that great or nice or even negative people even prefer to stay sometimes in abusive situations or relationships then go it alone you know so i encourage you all to let go of your fear be honest with yourself face your wounds ask and pray for guidance from the higher power your spirit guides the people out on the outside of the matrix in the spirit world look for help from friends family or other supporters healers ask yourself what you really want if you're really getting it be honest with yourself everybody that's what i really encourage and to reach for the stars don't be afraid to be single, um, a lot of people are. Don't be, um, and I'll, I'll work on your communication, your throat chakra. And don't be an enabler or a caregiver or a rescuer of other people, which many women do, because you can't save others, they need to save themselves. It's not your job to save other people, they have the universe on their side. So if you feel you're so unhappy with somebody, and but you feel responsible for them, their health, their happiness, their emotions, their mental well-being, Many women and people stay in a relationship because they're afraid their partner will like die or something if they leave. That's no way to stay in a relationship. I know people in my family who did that for years. You can't, you can't do that. If you want to go forward in life faster or better to the next expanded stage and journey, you need to be able to let go. And when you let go, it's when you open up. They come hand in hand. Close one door, another door opens. I've seen this in my life extensively. It actually happens in an instant. The minute I make an emotional breakthrough, an energetic me mental breakthrough, things happen and come in my life like rapidly. Because I also have a strong desire for like a good relationship and um, health and happiness and good opportunity. So, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been an exciting topic for me. It's a complicated, very deep, multifaceted subject. So go to a healer. You can get coaching one-to-one -one with me, for example, or other people on the internet or in person. Spiritual life coaching, body, mind, spirit is what I do. Energy healers are amazing. They're really helpful. 
and uh, work on your own self-honesty and self-reflection and self-investigation. Reflect at the end of every single day. Even when I stop at the traffic lights on my bicycle, I use that moment as a moment of like, sort of medit like reflection. It's like we're going to have a, reflect a reflective whole body, whole life flash over when we're dying, passing on to the next spirit stage. And what it's good to do at the end of our day or during our day to reflect on what's happening in us, to go over little events that are very important for us to learn, to grow and to heal from. Like, learn from our mistakes. So, don't keep in the same mistake for, like, forever. Cut it. Go on to the next adventure, the next stage. So, I wish I could have made this video better. I hope it's been good. I think it's been good, but I kind of feel like there's even more to come. But it's just, it's hard to get out sometimes. Send in love everyone, thanks for your love and appreciation, I appreciate your support, thank you for watching, thank you for your time and energy and wish all the best. And one last thing, if you look in the links below you'll see other good video recommendations as well as also if you're interested in my herb shop, if you want to support me, you or your body, mind, spirit with any of my herbs, I have a website called HigherSelfHerbs.com and I have two books on my website below as well as lots of free content. One is Emotional Mastery and the other one is Awakening the Enlightened Heart. So just in case you need in that for as a present for you or for others, just want to say thanks again and I look forward to hearing from you either in the comments or on Facebook, befriend me. And thanks if you give it a like or a share because that helps support me in the video and uh, other people to see it in the search. Thanks everybody. See you again.